Levine's biological age calculator, also known as phenotypic age, isn't the only biological age calculator that can be used. So today I'm going to talk about quantifying biological age with aging.ai. So first let's have a look at some data. So what we're looking at is the uh, data from my latest uh, uh, from my latest blood test on uh, December 29th of 2020, just a few weeks ago, and based on the data for the nine clinical biomarkers and my uh, chronological age of 47, the uh, biological age calculator phenotypic age gives me a value of 33.8 years. Now uh, that's pretty good because it's 13 years younger than my chronological age, which I've I've boxed there. Now by uh, age is included, chronological age is included in the phenotypic age measurement of biological age. So uh, because of that, it, it, it allows for greater correlation with these nine biomarkers with chronological age. Uh, now that's great because we want to have a calculator that is uh, as close to perfectly linearly correlated with chrono chronological age as possible so that it can be the most accurate. Now, there, but there's a limitation to that story. Uh, so first, by including age, chronological age in the calculation, the maximal biological age reduction is up to about 20 years. So with my chronological age of 47, uh, the, the, most that, uh, the, the greatest reduction that I could potentially experience would be seeing a biological age or a phenotypic age of around 27. Now, taking this further, let's assume that my uh, biomarker data doesn't change for one full year, but chronological age increases by one year. Now using this calculator, uh, my biological age then increases, as shown here, uh, to 34.7. So one chronological year passes and my biological age goes up by 0 0.9 years. But this, in this situation, my biomarker data is exactly the same as the year before. So to me, this seems like a problem. You know, if, uh, if my biomarker data is the same, but I age one year in chronological age, it doesn't make sense that my uh, biological age should increase. So uh, taking this even further, if I'm 80 years old and all of my biomarkers are indicative of youth, am I really 60 years old at best or younger? So although including chronological age in the calculation for uh, the biological age calculator is important for getting as close as possible to being linearly, perf almost perfectly linearly correlated with chronological age, it also may have a limitation in that it doesn't allow for uh, greater than 20 year reductions in biological age. So with that in mind, are there other biological age calculators that don't include chronological age as a variable? And I should say I'm still a big fan of Levine's uh, phenotypic age calculator. I'm still going to continue to use it. I just think it's important to use um, a variety of tools so that we can get closest to the, to the actual picture. So uh, aging.ai is, is one such tool, and it's strongly correlated with biological age without including chronological age in its model. So you can find it at aging.ai, and it's uh, free to use. You just enter your uh, blood test data, and it, it'll give you a readout of uh, your biological age. So what, is, what does it include? It includes 19 input parameters that are uh, found on the standard chemistry panel and complete blood count, CBC. And uh, these are tests that are commonly performed, uh, usually at a yearly physical with your, with your doctor, with your uh, general practitioner. Uh, and their cost is relatively cheap at about $35 uh, in the U.S. Uh, also note that C-reactive protein is not included in, on this list, which is kind of an extra measurement uh, when you go to the doctor. Uh, so thereby, you know, potentially it's an easier measurement to just get the standard chem panel and CBC. So how do the uh, 19 blood biomarkers correlate with chronological age, and that's without age, chronological age being in the calculation. So it's pretty strong with a correlation coefficient of 0 0.8. Now for comparison, note that that's not as strong as the uh, Levine's phenotypic age calculator, which in uh, for the combination of the nine clinical bi biomarkers in that biological age calculator and chronological age, so the sum of those 10 were almost perfectly linearly correlated with chronological age in two different studies, NHANES 3 with a correlation of 0 0.94 and NHANES 4, 0 0.96. Now for a quick comparison uh, uh, with the best epigenetic clock for uh, uh, its correlation with chronological age, that would be Steve Horvath's uh, epigenetic clock from 2013, which has a correlation coefficient of 0 0.97 with chronological age. So Levine's uh, uh, biological age calculator is almost identical to that. Um, and Although uh, aging.ai is not as good, again, it doesn't include age, so uh, it offers a slightly different perspective on biological age while still being strongly correlated with chronological age. 
So uh, having a relatively youthful uh, uh, biological age is important, but uh, is it actually associated, would having a younger biological age actually be associated with a reduced risk of death for all causes? Uh, and that's true for Levine's phenotypic age. So a younger biological age in that situation, a lower risk of death for all, all causes. So how about for aging.ai? And in fact, that is what they found. So people that had younger biological ages than their chronological, uh, uh, that was associated with a reduced all-cause mortality risk. So uh, so far, so good in terms of uh, a relatively strong correlation with chronological age and having a younger biological age being associated with a reduced risk of death for all causes. All right, so I have data for nine blood tests for Levine's biological age calculator uh, starting in 2018. That's just when I started including C-reactive protein for all my blood test measurements. But I have data for aging.ai for 24 blood tests since 2009 that can be used to calculate biological age. So let's have a look at that data. So uh, it, it, starting around 2005, I was only measuring about once a year, just at a yearly physical, and then recording whatever data they gave me uh, with blood tests uh, in an Excel file. Now, in some cases from 2005, I have all 19 variables, but in many other cases, I don't because I honestly, I was just going by what they told me to measure. I wasn't asking for measurements uh, or certain blood test measurements. So uh, on the left, we can see that I tested, I have a full set of 19 uh, uh, blood biomarkers uh, in 2009, 2012, and 2013. And I've included all the data on, up on the list in case anyone wants to double check my, uh, my numbers, you know, go to aging.ai, put my numbers in, you'll see these, these are the results that I've posted here. So uh, three blood tests over that four year span, 2009 and 2013, and we can see my chronological age on the left, my aging.ai 3.0, uh, uh, they have a couple other versions that, that require more than 19 biomarkers um, that I don't have the full uh, spectrum in many of the cases. So that's why I'm using aging.ai aging uh, 3.0. All right, so my aging.ai biological age in the middle, and then my average biological age of those three measurements on the right. So we can see that my average biological age is 32 years old compared with my chronological age over that period, which was around 39. So around a seven-year reduction for my biological age compared to my chronological age. So that's not terrible. It's, go it's in the right direction, but as, as many who have watched my videos for uh, using Levine's phenotypic age calculator, I, I'm uh, on average 12 years younger than my biological age for my blood test data since uh, 2018. So all this, although this uh, is good, the seven year reduction for these, you know, 2009 to 2013 data, uh, it's, it's not as good as uh, I, I can do. So let's take a look at that data. So in 2015, I started tracking my diet, including weighing all of my food, uh, entering that data into an online, free online software uh, without plugging their name because I'm not sponsored. Um, and, and any of them will work, you know, Fitbit, uh, or sorry, MyFitnessPal, Chronometer, all, any of those will work for logging your uh, nutritional info. Um, so then I recorded all of that data, including macro and micronutrients into an Excel file. So again, since 2015, I have uh, more than 2,000 days of dietary data in an Excel file. Uh, and then in 2016, I started blood testing more often. So instead of once a year at my yearly physical with my doctor, you know, uh, up to six times a year uh, to, get, to, to get a more full picture of my, my biochemical changes during through, throughout, uh, throughout aging. So uh, first, let's take a look at my data from 2016 to 2017. So I measured twice in 2016 and then four times in 2017. And then we can see my chronological age, my biological age in the middle, and then my average biological age on the far right. So in 2016, we can see that based on those two measurements, my average biological age was 28. And uh, compared with my average chronological age of 44, that's about a 15-year reduction. Now, that's a big improvement too from the 2009 to 2013 data. And I, I can say that I, you know, uh, I, I didn't record my data, my dietary data before 2015, so I can't give exact details of, of, about what I did differently. Uh, but uh, I'd, I'd argue that the act of tracking and then intervening once I got my blood test data to try to improve my biomarkers is a part of uh, this ability, this big jump in from seven years to 15 year improvement in a reduction in biological age. All right, so let's go forward. What about 2018 to 2020? So uh, I blood tested far more often than in 2016 to 2017. Uh, first six times in 2018, and we can see that my average uh, biological age over that period was 29 and a half. Uh, compared with my chronological age, that was now a 15.7 year reduction. So going in the right direction and even further reductions in um, biological age, year to year biological age. 
All right, so 2019, over three measurements, my average biological age was 30.3. Compared with my chronological, now I am 16.3 years younger. So still, you know, uh, for at least a four-year period, I'm able to consistently be 15 to 16 years younger than my biological age. All right, and then what about 2020? So we can see my average biological age uh, over six measurements is 31.3, and, and com when compared with the uh, my chronological age over that period, again, I'm 16 years younger than my chronological age. So um, I, I do have some room for improvement. Uh, it isn't perfect. You know, uh, if you notice my glucose levels, uh, something like the last eight measurements are over 90, and uh, you know, I'd like to see levels somewhere around 80 to 85 more consistently. Um, eight, my HDL is somewhere around 44 on average over all the blood tests over the last, uh, uh, since 2016. So I'd like to get it somewhere in the mid fifties. If you missed my HDL video, uh, I've got all the details about why the mid fifties may be optimal. Um, so there is room for improvement. Now, not only can with, by tracking biological age, not only can we track the, how much it's reduced relative to the chronological by having many data points over a period of years, we can track rate of aging. So if we compare that data starting from 2016 and looking at my 2020 data, so with an average biological age of 28 in 2016 and then 31.3 in 2020, that's a 3.3 year, 3 .3 years of biological aging in 4.8 years. Now I actually think I can do better than that too, especially if I'm able to reduce my glucose levels without and improve my HDL levels without changing anything else. Uh, now that's easier said than done, so stay tuned for that progress. Uh, in, in, in my upcoming videos. So uh, let's play it forward. What if I'm able to maintain this rate of aging, 3.3 years uh, of biological aging for every 4.8 years that pass over the next 75 years? So when added to my current chronological age, 75 plus, um, I'm going to be 48 uh, next week. So that'll put me at 123 years, which would get me to breaking the, the longevity record for uh, non calm men at 122. So if I'm able to maintain this aging rate for the next 75 years, how would that translate into biological age? Uh, and based on the 3.3 uh, divided by 4.8, uh, that rate would translate into 52 years of biological aging over the next 75 years, which would put me at about 83 years old biologically at 123 years. Now, whether or not that, that's how it's going to play out, let's see. Um, uh, but uh, let's hope that I can do that so I can break the, you know, break the longevity record. All right, uh, that's all I've got for now. Uh, if you made it to the end, thank you, and uh, I hope you enjoy the video, uh, and have a great day.